All right, as you can see, I'm playing Iron Man. Just to check, someone was asking about that. <laughs> I pretty much always play an Iron Man. Now, it's been a few weeks since I played, so uh, let's do a brief overview of what's going on to remind myself and uh, of those watching. <laughs> Taking a little bit to load here. Now, as you can see, I've got about, I'd say at least a fourth of India conquered right now. Very nice. I like playing the political map mode. Now, I'm not involved in a war, so that's good. I was smart enough to leave off uh, at peacetime. Now, I think I've got... Yes, I have a Regency Council. I have an amazing king coming up. Oh, no, wait. That guy sucks. Here we go. Here's the amazing king. 5-4-3. Oh, shoot. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. The Regency Council is for him. Yep, he's amazing. He's got a total of 12 points. Anything over, like, 10 total monarch points is just an amazing king, in my opinion. His claim is weak, which kind of really sucks, but my legitimacy is already low. Probably from all the, uh, the vassals I have next. My economy is doing amazing. I'm definitely going to be an economic powerhouse. Let's see, what ideas did I choose? Defensive. Alright, yeah, and next I'm looking at choosing... Uh, Exploration. I have a lot of diplomatic points to spend on that. Let's see here. Uh, still a few texts before I can actually get the next idea, though. The plan is going to be to explore and colonize all these islands over here. All the way down to, uh, I believe this is Madagascar. You can just barely see the edge of it. And then into Africa, of course. The, uh, the long-term plan is to hopefully get a colony next to Portuguese so I can westernize and get rid of my uh, crappy Indian tech levels. Because right now I've got like uh, something ridiculous, like a 50% tech penalty. So uh, I need to become competitive. I'm fine fighting other Indians, but when I'm fighting like Muslims and Europeans, I'll get my ass kicked. Let's see here. You know, I'm trying to think of why I'm saving up this diplomatic power. Do I have any vassals? Oh yeah, Cathawar and Gujarat. Ooh, that's very nice, actually. Let me see what's going on here. Okay, so I'm obviously trying to annex these guys. Alright, I've got a couple years before I can annex. It looks like this guy's good to annex. And holy crap, I can't next this guy for another nine years. <laughs> so yeah, I might as well just go ahead and uh, next these guys right away. I must have just ended a war, like in the, the last episode there. So I get a penalty to relations for annexing a vassal, which is like negative 40, but I can't next this guy for 10 years anyway, so I don't care. That's probably why I saved up all this diplomatic power, get the annexation going fast. Yeah, it looks like I'm in a solid position. Uh, I just need to wait out a few years before my king becomes old enough. So uh, I'm just going to fast forward it here. We'll just uh, stay at peace for a while. Skip ahead a bit. Get some buildings going while I'm waiting. All right, we have our new ruler, Krishna One Sangama. Hopefully I pronounced that right. <laughs> he is amazing. His attention to detail and superior administrative skill will aid us in reforming our administration and maximizing our taxes. Amazing administration skill, excellent diplomatic skill, and, uh, you know, medium military skill. Three is not bad. And our heir? Wow, our heir is a disappointment. Zero, two, two. <laughs> we might have to... Uh, Put him in the front lines. He can't be that old, though. He's zero. Man, he's already got a kid at 15. Although, he's got a lot of uh, stuff ahead of him. We might not have to kill off our heir because our king is so uh, so young that by the time he dies, our heir might uh, be dead, too. Hopefully, our king lives for a long time. And I believe that means we can, yeah, we can select a patron deity for our king. Let's see, we've got Shiva. 
core creation cost and aggressive expansion impact. Ooh, that's really nice for a conqueror. Diplomatic relations, better relations over time with Ganesh. Surya, national tax and trade modifiers. Ooh, lots of money. We're doing fine on money, though. Ganja, Ganga. Build cost and interest. Hmm. Build cost is interesting, but we're making lots of money, like I said. Shakti, discipline, and siege ability. That sounds really nice. And Vishnu, attrition for enemies and fort defense. You know, I think we might actually go with uh, Shiva. Just because uh, we get the cheaper core creation cost, and if we're going to be conquering the rest of India, we could probably use the uh, less aggressive expansion. Even though Shakti does make our troops a lot more powerful and stronger at sieging. It's kind of a difficult choice. But we're probably going to be uh, actually just creating cores, because I want to save up my diplomatic power for the next idea. I can get uh, to work on exploring before somebody else starts trying to colonize. Let's see, I've started annexing Gujarat, and uh, it's over halfway done. That'll be a nice addition to our kingdom. We'll get uh, those seven troops as well. I wonder if we want to go to war beforehand, though. Probably not, because you usually need diplomatic power to peace treaty. Orisa is still our big rival here. They're losing a war right now with Punjab. Where's Punjab? Oh, they're so teeny. They must have good allies. <laughs> no, they must have just warred uh, Orissa after we uh, kicked their butt. Now, uh, to form Hindustan, I only need Costa and Kale... Kalingandra. Unfortunately... Oh, wait a second. Oh, never mind. We can get those. No problem. I thought uh, they were the capital of Orissa, but they're not. Rajabar is. So, uh, yeah, I think we should war Orisa again. I need to get uh, some diplomats here. This guy's a next thing, so we'll bring this guy over. And also, I noticed that we have, like, a huge relations. Uh, we can grow our relations by, like, another 100 with Cathawar, so that penalty from annexing a vassal won't matter at all. <laughs> so we'll be able to annex them, no problem, which gives us a very powerful and wealthy coastline over here. Although it does put us into conflict with uh, Sindh, who is one of the, the Indian sultanates over here. Playing around with the uh, the Muslims. <laughs> we should be strong enough to deal with them, even if their troops are superior. I'm not sure if we actually have a Cassus Belly against Arisa. Let's find out in a second. Oh, we're actually still in that truce with them. And the truce will last until... It must be over soon. January 17th, 1494. Alright, so we have a year to prepare for our war. Should be no issue. Let's see. I've got a little bit of revolt risk. Where is Garjat? Oh, right here. I think that's uh, the land I took from them, isn't it? It's pretty small, and I'm actually going to station my troops there anyway, so I can easily uh, besiege their stuff. All I really want from them are the two provinces I need to form Hindustan, to be honest. And the rest of the war, I'll just like uh, have them separate all these nations that they conquered, maybe. Split them up into little bits. And I don't really see myself having any issues with them. They only have one ally, Kangra, who is tiny and also occupied. That must be why Punjab is uh, warring to conquer that territory. Maybe Arisa can't even get their troops there. <laughs> Poor Arisa, we're gonna kick their ass. As for our allies, Shan and Junapur, I was improving relations, so we should be tight with them. Shan is quite large, as you can see. We probably won't be friendly with them for much longer. Looks like uh, the Ming is having some issues with uh, a Zhao rebellion here. And these guys are just doing amazing. So I might be doing really good myself, but I've got some strong neighbors. <laughs> One of those Mandu guys will... Oh, they're a Sultanate. 
Okay, we're gonna have to war them too. They've got some big allies though, Junipor and Sindh. How about Nepal? They want our provinces. All right, so I can't really find any other decent allies right now, but we shouldn't need them. I'm actually going to make sure I've got claims on these two provinces I want. There we go. That way I can core them cheaper, and they're cheaper when I try to get them in a peace treaty. We're just going to speed things up and uh, wait until that treaty wears off. I recruited some more troops here. we got a massive army now. Oh, shoot, I should be doing that. I'm an Axian guy. Oh, and he's next. Nice timing. Let's see if we're over our military cap. Oh, we are by one. <laughs> Figures. There we go. Now we've got plenty of troops to uh, just destroy this guy. Hey, when's that treaty wear out? January. Oh shoot, let's get our uh, economy back up, or um, army maintenance that is. Now I do want to wait until I get this uh, claim fabricated as well, so we should have plenty of time. Oh yeah, let's build a palace, get our legitimacy up. That is excellent. Our legitimacy was so low, now it's like still under uh, halfway. That should help a lot with revolt risk. Oh yeah, I've only got 0.2% on one region. Man, remember that earlier war where it was like just revolt everywhere while I'm trying to fight Orisa. That was terrible. My only major loss so far. <laughs> now I can actually remove Nepal from the map. I wonder if that's a good idea. They're allied with Punjab. What a weird ally. Who is being occupied right now? You know what? I could just take Nepal. Maybe I'll take Nepal while I'm uh, fabricating a claim here. <laughs> Poor Nepal. <laughs> yeah, sure. We'll, we'll grab Nepal. Why not? My allies won't join in, but I'm not too concerned with Punjab, considering half of their land is occupied and they're so small. <laughs> we'll just annex this province, it's only base tax too. Someone already conquered uh, the other Nepalese uh, province. And they're a uh, sultanate as well, we are going to have to kick those sultanates uh, butt later. I think I need to get my missionary strength up so I can actually convert the uh, the Sunni provinces over to uh, Hindu. Man, my throat's pretty sore today. All right, and we can war these guys as well. Why not? I'll, I'll war Punjab and the guys they're at war with. <laughs> That's how dominant I am right now in this point in the game. Alright, I should underestimate Orisa though. Don't have to worry about their ally, that's for sure. And my Casus Belly goal will be to take Costa. That'll give me a nice eastern coastline. Alright, that should overpower that unit. We'll move those guys over too. Oh yeah, I've just got so many more forces than him, and it's ridiculous. My forces aren't anything special, although I am working on getting uh, my military uh, idea going. Right now their strength is in their uh, quantity more than their quality. See, how long till my next administrative tech? Hmm, I just gotta save up my uh, admin points. And let's see, who should I improve relations with? Who are these guys? Oh, they got separated in the war, I think. 
Oh, I can vassalize them. Oh, they're not very, very wealthy, though. I think I'm just going to go to war with them. <laughs> just war everyone. <laughs> That's how I roll. <laughs> Has no possible neighboring province? What? What are they smoking? We have to give them a month to exist. Nope, do I already have a claim? Oh, I do have a claim. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, war them too. Yeah, why not? Let's war them too. Let's just war three guys at once, because I'm insane. I'm just a crazy expansionist dictator here. <laughs> hey, my ruler's only 15. He, he doesn't know how everything works yet. <laughs> We're gonna send him this province first, because that's where the Arisan army is retreating to, I believe through my territory. How ridiculous is that? And uh, I don't know, who should we improve relations with? Oh wow, Shand is occupying Tibet? Damn, Shand is going to get big. Guess we'll improve relations with some of our uh, Chinese uh, buddies over here. Don't think I want to war any of those massive Chinese states. Oh no, my artillery is more expensive. That's so sad, considering I haven't invented artillery yet. <laughs> Small detail there. Man, three wars at once. That's a nice way to get back into this. <laughs> All right, everything's looking good. I've like almost occupied all the enemy territory. <laughs> what is this battle? I better not lose that. Okay, good. Let's see, so nobody joined Nepal in their war. And this guy had no allies, so I'm just picking on him. Some real bully action going on over there. <laughs> and nobody joined Orisa either. So I can just uh, fast forward this, I think. Man, I'm going to really piss off some people if I grab all this land. <laughs> I just need to wait for these sieges to get done. I have plenty of admin power to core all these areas too. Plus with my reduced uh, coring cost and less aggression, this is the perfect combination. I'm glad I went with Shiva. Alright, let's win the war against Nepal. Full annexation. Let's get that coring. Some harsh treatment there. No rebels in my provinces. Just send these troops up there to keep the rebellions down. Not bad for that kid's first year as king. <laughs> oh, trading cotton. Settler chance. Yeah, too bad I don't have any uh, one settling. <laughs> and my commander died. Where'd this guy pop out of? Alright, I'll send our army to kick that guy's ass and then send it back up there. Here's where would that two stack come from? Oh well, it's really not a big deal. It looks like uh, Gondwana is almost captured as well.
actually the name of one of the big supercontinents. I think they actually named it after this province. Excellent. Gonna annex you too? Man, people are gonna hate me after this war. <laughs> like the Napoleon of India here. <laughs> Cannot make the province into a core. Why not? Oh, because I'm at war with Arisa, who also has a core there. Oh, that's a weird rule. Never even knew that one. What is up with these sieges? Why um, do I not have enough people here? What is going on here? Stop that. Provinces I actually want to take uh, aren't being besieged. <laughs> there we go. What is this? Comet sighted. Peasants are always superstitious, and the appearance of a comet in the sky has caused a panic among our people. They're convinced that this is a sign that the end of times is near, or that something bad is going to happen in the near future. It's an omen. Lose one stability. The end is nigh. Lose one stability. The economy, fools. Lose one stability. Wow, those are some great choices. I think I would blame the economy. Oh, I actually have a mission. Oh, take uh, Calahandra. Yes, I want to do that. I actually have no generals in my army right now. Oh, actually, I do have one. Nope, no general. My crappy heir is like 15 years too young to become a general. <laughs> I don't think the troops to listen to a, a one-year-old baby. I need this siege to get done over here. You know, maybe I should just find another military leader. Wow, it only cost me 25 military power. wonder if that's something new. The glory of the army. Our glorious army is enhancing the prestige of our nation. Glory to us. Five prestige. Oh, this is a decent general, too. Man, we're gonna make a huge land grab this war. <laughs> Basically own a half of India if I play this right. And we'll be able to form Hindustan. Let me see uh, what we need for that. Oh nice, all we needed is Costa and Kalahandra, which are these two provinces. And we need to be at peace with three stability. Let's see, what does that do? <laughs> we get a claim on India. Country changes to Hindustan, gain 10 prestige. Alright, it's not that crazy, but at least we'll be a, a proper super nation. Oh, and I believe we get all the uh, the Indian cultures will be underneath us, or at least the, the, the southern Indian ones. <laughs> Although right now we already do accept a few. We'll accept more, I believe. Aw oh, man, is this siege gonna get over? Oops, it's over. <laughs> I gotta wait for my diplomat to get back though. That's fine, maybe we'll get a couple more sieges over. I think we've uh, just destroyed Orisa. I just gotta hope I don't get a huge collision against me. <laughs> Plus 10% production efficiency. That is nice. Alright, we're one tech away from getting our next idea group. If you look at expanding around the world. 
think I'll just separate all these little nations up here. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to leave Orisa their capital over here. But it'll be easy to take in the future. Uh-oh, Rebels popped up. Alright, I'll give this one more siege tick to uh, conquer. And he failed. Alright, that's not that big of a deal. Alright, I want these provinces, and I can't take that one. Here we go, release nations. Release Miwar. Garja. Garja's kinda teeny. Alright, release all those teeny things, and Arisa will be left with only uh three provinces. <laughs> Pretty easy to cut them up in the future. Excellent. And I completed the mission too. Oh no, I used up all my administration power in that uh that tech, so I can't core my provinces. That's okay, I'll get it back. That tech is nice, plus ten percent production is gonna make me a lot of money in the long run. Alright, I need to core these too. Man, I've actually got a really high overextension that's causing me a lot of penalties. That's fine, that'll go away in time once we start coring. I'll have my army sit on the provinces that'll give us the most uh, resistance. It's our new mission. Spread our culture to the Bengal Delta. No. Royal marriage with these guys? No, I don't care. Claim... Malwa. Yeah, that sounds good. Where's Malwa? Oh, these guys. <laughs> Arisa is no longer a valid rival. Man, they're really picky with this rival system. Oh man, I can only pick Shan as a rival? That's not cool. <laughs> Holy crap, Shan is huge now. <laughs> I'm gonna gobble up my Bengal territories over here. I'm glad I grabbed uh, Nepal. That'll keep them out of India so they can't conquer these guys. I should probably look at uh, grabbing these smaller states. I might be pushing it though. Oh, that's interesting. Those rebels that popped up are still in Orisa. <laughs> so the rebels became theirs. I thought those would go away after the war. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Leave them with three provinces and a huge stack of rebels against their one unit army. <laughs> Alright, we're going to have to rival Shan, otherwise I'm going to lose my uh, power projection, which is giving me some very nice bonuses. And Shan broke their lines with us. Crap. Oh wow, they like hate my guts now. That was fast. Hopefully that wasn't a terrible idea. <laughs> We're pretty strong though. I just need to stabilize and uh, form Hindustan. I'm not gonna lie with these little guys. Waste of my time. Holy crap, my revolt risk is really high. I'm not going to be able to form Hindustan this episode because I need to boost my stability three times on top of coring all those provinces. I think what I'll do is I'll gobble up some of these smaller guys. First I need to take care of these rebels. I think my army maintenance is still up. I'll just leave those guys there actually. Those 13 troops should be able to handle it. They've even got a general. Yeah. That's right, you rebels. Rebel scum. Man, these guys are like obsessed with becoming my vassal. 
I'd rather just annex them, honestly. Their tax is so low, it's really not worth going through the whole vassalization process. And get some missionary strength, I guess. You know, actually, I'm making so much money, maybe I'll want to pick someone else. Uh, too late now. Oh, stability cost would have been a good one. Shoot, once we get enough, uh, then we have to actually wait until November. That's okay, we have it on fast speed, that should be soon. There we go, this will give us more administration power, which is what we really need right now. And uh, stability cost will be cheaper, which is also something we need. It's expensive, but I'm making a ton of money. From trade alone, I'm making uh, 10 gold uh, a month. That's freaking awesome. And my unity is okay. All these provinces I got must be uh, Hindu. That's pretty lucky. With all these provinces, having one or two Muslims uh, won't be a big deal. I even have the 20% uh, extra religious unity. So I've got a pretty stable nation coming up here. I'll definitely want to war Risa one more time just to finish him off. I'm surprised they're not in a coalition against me. They should, like, really hate me. I still have a few years before I can annex uh, Cathawar, but they've got some pretty decent provinces. Alright, and I should be able to core at least one more province. Where are they at here? All right, we'll speed things up, and I'll get uh, Costa coring before the uh, the end of the episode here. Sort of biding my time right now. I only have two diplomats still. So I'd like to get claims on all those smaller nations too, and uh, take them out before uh, these guys gobble them up. Oh man, I don't want to lose legitimacy. I'll have to lose the admin power. That sucks. Good thing my new king is an amazing administrator. That's kind of lucky. I get 10 a month. Whoa, my manpower is really low. I must have lost a lot of troops in that war from uh, attrition and sieging and such. That's a shame. Gotta be careful with low manpower. That's why we should be getting our stability up soon. I just want to get that other thing coring. Me War wants to ally. Who's Me War? Oh, those teeny guys. Oh, they might be worthwhile. Eh, their provinces aren't worth that much. But it might be nice to vassalize them. We don't really have that many allies. At least they have two provinces unlike Bungle kind. And then they say religion so we can royal marriage them. Oh, what is this? Kachar. Where's Kachar? Oh, psh. Shan? Yeah, we're not attacking them. His mission's kind of blow. Alright, now this guy's got one sunny province, but that's not that big of a deal. We should take him out. He's allied with Junipur and Sindh. Alright, that's why we haven't attacked him. He's allied with those two big boys. Let's grab these smaller ones first. Like, Garjet is allied with, like, no one. Get a claim on them. And I have enough to start coring this province. There we go, everything's coring. Now I just need to get my stability to level 3 and just keep my land in order. I still have a lot of revolt risk going on here. So we'll probably uh, keep things going uh, fast in the next episode as well. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to form uh, Hindustan. Wouldn't that be excellent for a Hindustan playthrough? <laughs> Accomplished quite a lot this episode though. Yeah, I'd say we have at least a, a third or 50% of India. This is really strong. Economy is doing really well, even with that uh, that pricier uh, council uh, member there. 
make an eight a turn. And actually, I can turn this down a little bit. Get the maintenance for military down. We'll, we'll get it around uh, 12 a turn there. Don't want it too low. Otherwise, nations notice you're weak and they might like wipe out one of your larger armies <laughs> when you're not paying attention. <laughs> Disputed succession. Oh, I'm the same dynasty as. Oh, he's the same dynasty as me, Miwar, but I don't really need to get a personal union with those guys. I'm also with Kalthawar. That doesn't really matter. Yeah, no dynastic stuff going on here. Oh, wow, I can rival Ming. Ming's army is actually weaker than mine. They must be having some serious uh, issues over there. Maybe I should look at expanding into Shan. How ridiculous would that be if I unite China and India together? That's like most of the world's population. <laughs> All right, yeah, if you guys uh, enjoy these, uh, definitely comment below. Let me know uh, you enjoy watching these. I'll be making them regardless, but uh, it's nice to know that uh, people are actually interested. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys.